Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I had shown in the previous video how impractical it is to expect alcohol consumption, quote unquote, in moderation, when there is no definition of what moderation is. And then when you get drunk, you're a sinner. You incur the wrath of God, basically. Now, I was going to let the Quran answer the question, which is, why did Allah create medicinal properties in alcohol but totally banned it? Now, the, the, the rationale for asking this question is the thought that the Quran was written by man, and uh, this man believed that alcohol was merely an intoxicant and, you know, did not have full knowledge of the fact that, you know, uh, centuries later, you know, uh, benefits of alcohol will be discovered. So, this man just went ahead and banned alcohol totally. Right? So, uh, I'd like to remind, you know, of the fact that there is no benefit of alcohol that is exclusive to alcohol alone. None. Everything that alcohol can do, there are other things that can do it. And more importantly, those things are not in, uh, intoxicating. So, uh... Here is the answer from the Quran. It is in Surah 2, verse uh, 219. It goes like this. I'm not going to uh, quote from the whole of that verse. But I'm going to quote the first part that is very relevant to this argument. Surah 2, 219. It says, They will ask thee about intoxicants and games of chance. Say, in both there is great evil, as well as some benefit for man. But the evil which they cause is greater than the benefit which they bring. Allah Akbar. Now, the, 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 the verse starts with, They will ask thee. This is foreknowledge of the fact that questions like this will arise. People had not even been asking these questions yet. But God knew the human beings that he created and he knew the mind that they had that they have or the minds that they have and you know he pretty much knew what questions they can ask so we said he told the, to, uh, said the prop to the prophet say in both there is great evil and we're talking about gambling and intoxicants now but intoxicants is what is relevant for this argument in both there is a great evil, as well as some benefit for man. But the evil which they cause is greater than the benefit which they bring. Now, what we're going to do is do an analysis of the benefits of alcohol and the evil that alcohol brings and see if it is consistent with the Quran. Now the benefits of alcohol. We know that it can reduce your risk of developing a heart attack. It can reduce your risk of dying of a, a heart attack. Or it can uh, reduce your risk of developing a heart disease itself before a heart attack. Now, it can possibly reduce your risk of strokes. That is a suggested or suspected benefit. It can lower your risk of gallstones. It can possibly reduce your risk of diabetes. And um, that's another suspected benefit. Now, we also know that we, we can use alcohol in sterilization. You can sterilize surgical equipment. You can uh, sterilize wounds, depending on how far the progress of you know ex exposure to germs is. Uh, you can use alcohol in the manufacture of some fragrances. You can make a lot of money from alcohol. It's a $180 billion a year industry. So, benefits from alcohol. Now, we will analyze those evils that were talked about by the Quran that are a result of alcohol. Alcohol can cause cancer of the pancreas, cancer of the mouth, Cancer of the pharynx, cancer of the larynx, cancer of the esophagus, 
cancer of the liver, cancer of the breast. Should I stop now? And a woman who drinks alcohol can uh, actually puts. I mean, a woman who drinks alcohol is at a 20 to 25 percent risk of developing breast cancer. Alcohol can cause pancreatitis. It can cause if you have uh, of cardiovascular disease. It can just make you to die just like that. Poof. Sudden death. It can cause heart muscle damage. It can cause heart failure, stroke, brain shrinkage, cirrhosis of the liver. Pretty much what you're seeing right now is a healthy liver compared to a cirrhotic liver. It can cause miscarriage. Uh, if a woman drinks alcohol, even in moderation, quote unquote, it can cause fetal alcohol syndrome. And this is when the baby is born with abnormally small eyes, the ridge between the nose and the upper lip is absent, so they have a flat upper lip. Uh, the baby could be deaf, have a cleft palate, cleft lip, uh, liver disease, heart malfunction, uh, skin abnormalities, uh, kidney disease. Why would you want to do that to your baby? Even drinking alcohol in moderation can cause that. What about motor vehicular accidents? Uh, what about uh, depression to suicide? Pretty much in the case of motor vehicular accidents, the picture you're seeing right now is of a woman who rode in a car with somebody who was impaired by by uh, alcohol uh, intoxication. She didn't drive, she just rode in the car and that's what she became. The inset is the, her picture before the accident and that is what she looks like now. Now we talk about benefits of alcohol. Do you know that if you have a history of hemorrhagic stroke that the benefits of alcohol is useless to you? If you have a history of a liver disease, the benefits of alcohol is useless to you. If you have a history of pancreatic disease, the benefits of alcohol is useless to you. If you have any precancerous, you know, precancerous <laughs> growth in your mouth or your esophagus or the upper GI tract and this is proven by a doctor then don't drink alcohol the benefits of alcohol is useless to you if you're on antibiotics the benefits of alcohol is useless to you if you're on anticoagulants which are drugs that help reduce the the, the formation of clots in the bloodstream which can cause a stroke or pulmonary embolism if you're on antidepressants the uh, benefits of alcohol is useless to you. If you're, on if you're on diabetes medications, the benefits of alcohol is useless to you. Antihistamines, if you're taking those, the benefits of alcohol is useless to you. If you're on anti-seizure medications, the benefits of alcohol is useless to you. If you're on beta blockers, beta blockers are uh, specifically a class of drugs that uh, help reduce blood pressure. So basically if you're on blood pressure medications, the benefits of alcohol is useless to you. Uh, if you're on pain relievers like Tylenol, anything that contain acetaminophen, you're pretty much trying to speed up your liver damage. So the benefits of alcohol is useless to you. If you're taking sleeping pills, maybe you have sleep disturbance and you're taking, for instance, you know, some kind of sleeping pill. The benefits of alcohol is useless to you. But if you insist, you can sleep and never wake up again. So what's the use? Are we seeing the evils of alcohol? What about domestic violence? What about crimes induced by the use of alcohol? Now we can see that the evils of alcohol vastly outweighs 
the benefits of alcohol as outlined 1,429 years ago by the Quran. But I'll let the listener decide for or against. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.